I just got the thumbs up from Kruno that everything looks good. So go ahead and kick off Open Line Friday. Thanks for joining us this Friday. My name is Josh Benoit with marketing for ePlan USA. Uh, I want to uh, remind everyone that this is being recorded. We do it each and every Friday. It's called Open Line Friday. And really, thank you for joining us. We've got some great experts on with us this week that we'll talk about in a second. But if you're a veteran to ePlan or if you've never used ePlan, this is really your chance to interact with us, your chance to get your questions answered. That's why we have the chat function for you to ask those. Or if you just want to comment maybe on what Todd's wearing or, or some of the questions that they answered for me later on about their personal lives, that would be great too. So that being said, let me introduce you to our experts this week. Uh, we have Todd, who's a solutions advisor for ePlan, as well as Derek, who you've seen quite a few times recently. In fact, I have his terminal strip um, uh, graphic in the background right here. He's our ePlan certified engineer. Happy Friday, guys. I want to make sure that we can hear y'all, so say hi. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. You know, Derek's kind of a celebrity with us lately. I mean, his videos are getting thousands and thousands of hits. Um, Total Request Live for MTV is asking to have him on. It's a pretty big deal recently. So yeah, I'm 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 going to become his agent here soon. So <laughs> <laughs> it's me again. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Do go go. Uh, you can either go the Bieber route or you can go the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC route, maybe Timberlake. I don't know how you're going to do that, bro. How are you going to you gonna <laughs> follow up or how anybody's going to follow you? Sean Moheran uh, did a pretty good job, though, with that platform 2023 recently. Yeah, he did. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into talking about who these guys are, because really what we try to do with Open Line Friday is not only take your questions, but talk about the personalities behind ePlan, because there's a lot of really great people that I work with on a daily or weekly basis. So uh, we're going to talk about Todd for a second from California, been with ePlan for three years now. No, that means you know everything about ePlan. And of course, the, the between the time that you joined and you took <clears throat> this book, picture that's on screen and now you have that glorious beard. Yep. That's what happens when you're at home. <laughs> your hobbies are uh, training Brazilian jiu-jitsu and spending time with the four kids. Are your kids into jiu-jitsu? Um, I have, they have all tried it. Um, they haven't necessarily stuck with it, but my wife and I like to uh, practice some things on them here and there to keep them, keep them uh, fresh on it. I, I always tell my, my kids at school and, and they're not bullies in any sense of the word, but I said, if there's a kid that tells you that they know Brazilian jiu-jitsu at school, never, ever mess with them. <laughs> Don't ever, ever mess with that kid because he will put you to sleep Good without advice. you even know it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you uh, practice that a lot? Is that something you do uh, quite a bit in your off time? Uh, yes, it's something that I've, I've done for the last four years with my wife and uh, we love it. It's good. It's good. Good exercise. Uh, good uh, with your mental as well. And um, yeah, it's, it's a fun hobby. Do you know the rubber guard? Uh, I, that's not that's not one of my favorites. Oh. <laughs> Only ask because I, I love MMA and I will talk about Derek too in a second. Uh, so I, I've picked up some of the terminology. Not that I know a ton about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but let's go ahead and talk about Derek He's from Chicago. Uh, you've been with ePlan for about four years now. Uh, went to University of Illinois, Chicago, and you like to play basketball, watch MMA. Who's your favorite MMA guy? Let's see if Todd knows this person or not since he's into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Not that everybody that does jiu-jitsu likes MMA, but who's your favorite guy? Right now, it has to be Charles Charles Oliveira. Really? Favorite fighter, yeah. He's just well-rounded, you know. I just like watching him. He's a very exciting yeah. fighter. Look, I'm a Poirier fan. Yeah, uh, because I'm from Louisiana, and so I was a little bit sad a few months ago. Yeah, Charles is a good champion, though. He's really a good champion. Yeah. Uh, Todd, what about you? Do Do you have a favorite? Do you watch a lot of MMA? Um, I watch some. I I do like um, uh, Poirier is 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 a good guy. Um, but uh, I you know I used to be. Uh, a big fan of back in the day, uh, George St. Pierre. He was one of my all-time favorites. GSP, that's right. Yep. Good guy, very humble guy too. Yes, definitely. So um, 
What's your favorite place to go eat in Chicago? I, I want to know this, Derek, because I go to Chicago every once in a while, and I want to find out what the you know, hot spots are. You know, there's there's a local Indian restaurant near my place, and I I, I, get, I just got to show you where it's at. It's kind of hidden. Okay, okay. <laughs> but that's my favorite go-to place. All right. I don't really go to downtown because, you know, it's a little – crazy over there lately and what in downtown it's crazy yeah just a lot of um parking issues and potholes on the roads <laughs> you know what i didn't realize until i visited chicago the first time is that people put put things on the side of the road to claim their spot yes that's they'll, they'll just put couches or trash cans or whatever to claim their spot. I, I thought that was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. That happens a lot when when it's winter, when it's snowing. So yeah, you, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. If you shovel your spot, that's yours. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I get you. See, we don't we don't deal with any of that here in Houston. Oh no. Yeah, there's no snow over here. So, well, let's get into eplan a little bit again. If you have a question, please leave that in the chat for either Derek or uh, Todd. And we'll get to that. But uh, one of the things that we got to talking to right before the, this kicked off earlier is whenever we have a new client that gets the software, gets ePlan, Derek, can you tell us or, or walk us through the process? What's that process like whenever they get it and what they should do after that? Yes. Let me go ahead and share my screen so we get a better understanding on, on how this works. We make you the presenter. Thank you. So let me share. And as he's getting that going, just to reiterate, yeah, we get a lot of questions, call-ins after they just get the software and how to start it, how to download it, and um, this is a very common thing. So I, I think it's a great, great question there, Josh. Can, can you see my screen? Can you confirm, please? Yep. All right. So first off, when you when you when you receive your your license, you'll get a welcome letter. Inside that welcome letter, you'll get a license number and your your unique customer number. So that's that's a requirement in order for you to download our software. And in order to download the installation files, you'd have to go to ePlanUSA.com. Under services, you can go to the downloads page here. And, and it'll ask you to log in. So for me, I already logged in. It's going to take you to the, that, the, the actual download page. All, all the way to the top, you'll see the ePlan platform 2022. It talks about what's new, and right down here is the, the download area. So if you click there, it'll take you to the next page, which, which um, actually it, it enumerates the, the steps involved so you have to have your own ePlan ID it's our it's part of our requirement in order for you to start ePlan and have access to the ePlan e cloud environment so first off you have to create that and then after that you if you have to create an entitlement ID you can do it here but part of the welcome letter is is the entitlement ID as well so you probably don't need that and then right all the way down here, the third, the third step is the actual download um, link. So if you click this, it'll download the zip file. And you obviously have to extract the, fo the folder first and then start the uh, installation. Now, if you go back to the main page here, there's a link to the guided installation. I wanted to point this out because it's a really cool tool that we've added on our, to our website. It'll take you to this. So if you if you purchase a single user license, and this is your first time installing the software, you can go to to uh, this link here. Or if you purchase a network license, you can click here. Now, if I go to the first option here, what's cool about this is it gives me everything I need to know and so that I can prepare for uh, the, the actual installation. So what are the hardware requirements? Will my will my workstation be sufficient enough? And 
you know, this is kind of the part where you have to check with your, your with your computer or with your IT department and see if uh, if ePlan will will be able to uh, run on your computer. We also have the software requirements here. So since uh, this this is part of a similar to a Microsoft, so you gotta have the net framework here installed and also some Microsoft Office tools in order to uh, utilize the, the complete functionality of ePlan. And then I, I, the most important part here is the installation. So if you have any questions, if, if, if something comes up well, during the installation, you can simply uh, watch this video on how to do it, on how to uh, go about it, and then the actual installation uh, instructions is here. So you've got everything you need on this website. I, I can paste it on the chat so you don't, uh, so you have access to it. Other than that, this is where you would go. Fantastic. Ty, you, you, I don't know if you want to expand upon that any. No, no, that, that, that it's perfect. He nailed it, and and that's that's the thing is we we've uh, updated this, and we've wanted to make it easier, um, easier to get to, um, easier to to download, and get them off and running as soon as possible. And sometimes it's just visually seeing it, knowing where it's at, and then you're off and running. So now, in the beginning, there's a question about legacy data and how exactly you use that or implement it into uh, ePlan. So. How would you go about, this is probably a question that both of you get pretty often, well, maybe you more, Todd, but um, what is your answer to that whenever you have clients that are asking? Yeah, it, it is a common question. Um, a lot of times we have, um, you know, prospects that are, have been using AutoCAD for a while and have a good amount of legacy information. And, um, you know, one of the, the main questions is, hey, can we, can we import uh, AutoCAD into ePlan? And the answer is yes. Um, so the, the only problem is, is, you know, big difference between, uh, ePlan and, and, and the rest of us is, uh, you know, it's, there's logic behind it. It's a database driven software. So you're just going to be importing lines and objects. It's not really going to essentially help you. So there's going to be a little upfront work, uh, but once, uh, and, and obviously Derek can jump on this and correct me if I'm wrong, but is that once you get to used to using the software, you take a training course with one of our experts like Derek then you're able to start to design an e-plan and you get that going and there's a lot of efficiencies that you can get out of e-plan to, to create, re, redraw it into e-plan and get that logic and to help you not only from the engineering side, but all the way to the shop floor of the Panama manufacturing. So that's kind of where I, I kind of stay within my, uh, my lanes. What, what do you think Derek? Yeah, I completely agree with that statement, Todd. So like, like what you said, there, you have to establish the the data that you've been using and transfer it over to ePlan. But in the long run, there's a lot of benefits to that because it's been established and it's it's uh, standardized to your that meets your you know your requirements. And so that's with in that case, you you can easily um, tackle future projects more you know a lot quicker and it'll be more accurate. So yes, completely agree with that. Now we do have a question in the chat. I'm not sure if this would be a little bit too technical of a question. So Derek, I'll have you look over that question real quick. And, and if anybody else has a question, you can leave it in the chat as well. So Derek, while you look at that, let me ask this. Where does the, where do the parts data, like the database reside? And, and will other users in the organization have the same database or is there an, their own database? How does that work, Todd? Um, that I, I would actually lean that to Derek. He's he's more of a little a little more uh, expert on that that side of it. Yeah. So when it comes to the database, if we're talking about the project database, you can put that on a a network drive and share the same database so that everybody else within the network um, is working on the same project, right? You can use you know a simple. Uh, access database but we recommend using a sql database because it's a lot faster and it's better for managing data so that that works for projects it works for parts and it works for translations that's how it works okay gotcha 
I, Todd, I thought that you could answer all of the questions. I thought you were the guy. <laughs> one of these. That's why I got to take one of these guys with me everywhere I go. Yeah, look at that for the, the question that we got in the chat. You can answer that one, right? I, I looked at that and my, my eyes went cross. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I would have to get in contact with uh, Mohammed. I, this this might be a, a user specific issue. Okay. So if we, if I can get his contact information, I can uh, get yeah. in touch with him. Yeah. After the after we're done, I'll I'll get that over to you. And again, what I do each week is is if you miss just a piece of this, then I can I send it out to everyone that's registered. So it is being recorded, and we do send that out. Um, Todd, is there another way to share an ePlan project other than emailing a PDF? Yes, there is. Uh, we have a, a great option for that, which um, we call it eView or ePulse. I think it's eView is going to go away and it'll just be uh, umbrellaed under ePulse. But it's it's a new way to, if you can uh, envision using ePlan, you created your project and you can, uh, from the options menu, you can upload uh, to the cloud. And what that allows you now to send that project to really whoever you want, if it's maybe I've, I've seen different uh, ways of using it. Maybe the engineer needed the guys in the shop floor to view the project. And so they can just send that to them. Um, they don't have to actually have an ePlan um, license. It's a free, uh, you just register for ePulse. And they can see the full schematics. If they have pro panel, like you have behind you, Josh, they can see a three rendering of the enclosure as well. They can redline it, they can mark it up and it will date and timestamp and keep track of the dialogue between you know, the engineer and whoever it's going to. So if it's a guy's on the shop floor or if it's a client and you wanna show that virtual uh, twin of what's going to be built, you just send this to them. They can take a look at it, make some notes on it and you're dialoguing that way. So it takes that you know, old school PDF, let me email it, wait for them. It, it's it's re real live, um, you know, back and forth through the cloud. Eric, you have anything to add to that or did he pretty much sum it up for you? Yeah, he did. I mean, it's it's a very underrated uh, functionality. Uh, okay. You know, because, you know, we live in a digital world, right? We, we have to be able to share documents, you know, with a, with the with the within seconds really because it's important if especially if we're running a big business in the factory if we're trying to do some uh, some maintenance work and we're trying to figure out what's going on we have to have the the updated data sheet or our design or you know electrical design so I think a lot of our users should really utilize this tool it's e it's called eView it's integrated within our platform and it's it's part of your your license so that's that's all i gotta gotcha did we did we lose derek just for a second i think he's i think he's in the matrix right now this <laughs> hey by the way todd this happened uh derek and i were doing uh, one of our one of the uh, monthly webcast and in the middle of the monthly webcast and it was just he and I on it um, in the middle of the the webcast that we were doing which is very technical information and we have to remember that I'm the marketing guy so Derek is a very technical guy and in the middle of it he loses he lost his signal and so that left me <laughs> holding the bag when <laughs> talking about I think it was the terminal strip one talking about terminal strips and thank goodness it was only about 30 seconds to a minute because i would not have been able to pick up with that that's something <laughs> that, that <laughs> from well, a marketing ready. standpoint yeah got, got got to be ready to talk about something you don't know about yeah it, that's yeah. exactly what it was so we'll wait I, for derek uh, what i was going to say josh is you know and and while we're waiting for derek um you know one question that I, I get asked is, um, what, what is coaching? Okay. And, uh, you know, coaching, I think of coaching. I, I just got done coaching my son's baseball team and little seven, eight year olds. Dude, you're brave. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the, these kids are going there. They know a little bit about 
uh, baseball and we're, we're guiding them and help them to refine their skills and know where to run and to tag up and all this stuff. And it's really just helping them become a little bit better in that sport. And so, it, you know, I, I think it translates correctly to ePlan. Um, we, we have a lot of uh, customers that, that have the software. They, they start to utilize the software, they go through training and, and they're using it and they're fine. And so, um, but how do we, how do we improve that? And so uh, just a personal example, uh, I had some existing customers reach out and they said, hey, we, we, we love ePlan, but we know that we're, we're like on first base with ePlan and we really want to get to like third base, but we just don't know how to get there. So coaching was, was the answer to that. And, and there's different variations of that virtual coaching or on-site coaching. And so what we did is we actually had one of our uh, guys go on site and do some coaching, sit down with them for a few hours, and really just to sit there and sit, and sit there and see how are they doing it? What are you doing today? And quickly being able to say, okay, we can do a better way here. Here's another better way to do that. And just by spending a few few minutes, a few hours with them, they they were able to make some some little adjustments on how they're doing their projects that just blew their mind and saved them a large amount of time going forward. So. Um, I have some personal experience with it, and we did it a lot, and, and coaching is a, is a great thing, a great bolt-on after the fact when you have taken the training. Um, so I don't know if, if uh, Derek has anything to say on that or you, Josh, but that, that's been something that's been very uh, positive for, for us. Well, the interesting thing is that when you talk about coaching, the difference between coaching and training, whenever you're being trained on something, they're teaching you at that point how to do everything, how everything works and, and exactly what you're going to do. After that, the coaching is very important because you're going through the motions and someone's telling you, that's great, you're able to do this, but this is probably a better way. That's the whole coaching aspect of it because you're not being trained at that point. You're just being taught a little bit better way how to maneuver around the system, how to, how to maneuver around ePlan. I think that we have Derek back. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it's a very, it's a very great, um, um, you know, service that we offer. Um, so, and, and as Derek said earlier, I think it is very underrated. Uh, we have some very smart guys on staff and can really, really help um, coach you guys along with ePlan. Derek, how you doing, buddy? Yes, I'm here. Got kicked <laughs> out. Thanks, Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I, I was going to, I have a question for you. Yes. About going from 2.9 to platform 2022, because that's something that is right now we're in platform 2022. And I have a question about 2023 in, in a second, but how easy is it to make that jump from 2.9 over? Yeah. So earlier when I was showing you the guided installation, part of that, uh, the steps that needs to be taken is listed there. And so you would have, if you're coming from the 2.9 version, you have to create that ePlan ID first. That way it'll be linked to your, your ePlan account. And we, we then um, do the, the background work and we then assign your account to a specific company organization. So I know it's a lot technical, but this, it's, it has to be in order for you to, you know, upgrade your license completely. A lot of people miss that step. And then um, after that, it's just a matter of um, reactivating the license again. And um, from there, you have the, the latest version. You were part of the Introducing Platform 2023 yes. um, webcast that Sean Mulheron did just a few days ago. What were your takeaways? What What do you find in 2023 that, that are, are major upgrades? You know, there's there was a, there are, there's a lot of functionalities that get that, that got improved. Well, the, mo the, the most common one, the, the one that really stood out to me was the uh, the the improvement in in 3D rendering. To me, that's a huge deal because you know the faster, the the more you know, the better the performance of the software, the the faster I get to get my work done, right? And on top of that, we've, we've added a few um, improvements in the uh, parts management as well. So it's a lot easier to maintain your, your component data. And also we're, we're planning on 
uh, creating e-learning videos on all the new all the new features. So keep a lookout on that one too. We had a question. What are a couple bullet points for going from 2.9 to 2022? Do you have those set in your mind, Derek? Okay, I guess it's better. <laughs> That was that was the Sorry same to put question, you on the right? spot, buddy. No, it's fine. This is no, that was a question of, in the chat. Yeah. So, bullet points. Like, I guess I need more. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming he's talking, and tell me what you think, Josh. But like, um, what are some of your top bullets of of that have been beneficial for going from 2.9 to 2022? Is is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of changes coming from version 2.9, but if you go to the ePulse, your your ePulse account, you you can find e-learning videos there too, so you can learn um, more about the new features. It, you know, a couple of things that uh, that uh, Krino had mentioned was the backstage view and ribbon yeah. technology. Um, you know. I don't know. Is that something quick to to show that real quick, uh, Josh and, and Derek? Um, yeah, I can show a little bit of the new. That's that's a Derek question because sure. we know that I'm not showing anything. <laughs> I think that we've already that's well developed, right? And I I can't <laughs> yeah, show I can that, sh how to use that. I can show I can show something here real quick. It's Let amazing me... to me. You know, it's amazing, Derek, while you pull that up. It's amazing to me that I go any question I've ever had about ePlan and I and I talk to either Kruno or Derek or Paul or Renee uh, or even Ian, that they're able to come back like that with an answer because they know so much about ePlan and about the functionality and those tips and tricks that Derek talked about. Those are very important. Or, I'm sorry, that was you, Todd, that talked about those tips and tricks that are very important for people that are, are taking too long. We are efficient engineering, and it's about being more efficient on a project-by-project project basis that sets us apart from everybody else, really. Yeah. Yep. I, 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 as, as he's pulling that up, I, it makes me think of, uh, you know, like iPhone, right? You can get an iPhone and you you can use it to make phone calls and text, but sometimes you got to go to the Apple store and actually sit in on some, <laughs> some coaching from those guys in the, in the polos. <laughs> right. Yeah. So this is the new ePlan electric PA 2022. If you're not familiar with, uh, with this, you can see if, if you're an, an old time uh, ePlan user, you can see the, the difference, right? Based on just the user interface. It's similar to Microsoft Office tools now, like where you can find all the functionalities within within like, you know, two two clicks. Rather than before, there's a menu bar here, you'd have to go through like, you know, three different clicks before you get there. But in, in this case, it's a lot more intuitive and you can f easily open your projects now within the backstage view. This is what Kruno is talking about. You can open, um, whatever project you have in the in your in your database so let me just open a, a sample project here the sample project when you open the the project itself the the navigators are they they have they're, they're still there right the software it's still heavily uh relying on a bunch of navigators the main one is always going to be the pages navigator so once you open the project here, it'll be listed. You can open multiple projects at the same time. And now when you open a, a, a schematic, as soon as this loads for me, there's another option that, uh, that Kruno mentioned in the chat. It's called the Insert Center. Okay, I have to reopen it again. But what's happening it so while that is uh opening again, let me let me describe to you the 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 e-learning modules that I was referring to earlier. If you open up your ePulse account, it, it this can be on a browser by the way, or you can do it from from uh 
from ePlan. There's an e-learning module training 2022. So if you click here, you'll see that um, a bunch of modules that is uh, that you can watch. These are these are actually interactive videos. So it tells you how to go about the 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 new uh, the new version of ePlan. So let me open that project again. Hey, Derek, while you're doing this, I was telling Todd earlier, explaining how whenever we had uh, the terminal strip video and, and your signal dropped out for that, how I, I was <laughs> doing a really great job of explaining terminal strips for that 30 seconds that you were out. Yeah, you know what? For some reason, it's always when I'm presenting, but it never happens to me when, you know, any time of the day. It's only when I'm presenting. When it's important. Sure, yeah. sure. Seriously, I don't know why, but I guess it's just my <laughs> luck, you know. <laughs> and also, it's 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 reading the the project right now. But I think I want to sh I want to keep uh, talking about this because I think it's really important. This uh, e-learning modules, it's an easy way to kind of stay in touch and get updated on what's new, right? So if I click here, you'll see that there's a bunch of videos that you can watch talking about the new features, the the ribbon structure, the backstage view, right? What's new? And then what's the typical workflow in in 2022? So I, I would highly suggest to uh, get get a good look at this. Like I said earlier, we're gonna release e-learning videos for 2023. Yeah. Nice. We By have the way, this is, this is both an IC and an FPA. Very nice. Yeah. Go ahead. Then another question about: Is there a forum where people can share um, mac uh, micros? It says micros. Macros. Macros. Yeah. To other ePlan users. Yeah, is there is there a place to share that kind of information? I don't know um, if that's something that that is doable or not. That was a question in the chat. We do have a forum, however, I'm not. I don't think we you're allowed to share files in that forum. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware of that as well. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Derek. Yeah, we have a community. Let me share my screen again, and I'll I'll send this link. So okay. this is, if you go to this link here, I'll send it to the chat. Oh, no, I just made you presenter again. It'll take you to this website, the ePlan dot community. I've created my own. So here you can. It's like a thread where. Mm. E plan users can go to and talk about whatever they want to ask other users, right? So you see, th there's a bunch of people from different countries here. They're asking about specific e plan questions. These are actual e plan users. But other, I don't know if maybe if you send a link to a you know a OneDrive or Google Drive, then you can share your macros. Yeah. So uh, I can I start think a, Start a I think this, Derek is is good because I'm I'm pretty sure that many ePlan users don't even know that this exists. Yeah. So um, I think it, I think it's great. Yeah, you see, there's a lot of threads and posts from different users, and it's organized by by the by our portfolio. So if you're if you have Harness Pro D, you can ask questions here. This is on top of the ePlan Solution Center uh, incentive that you have. So if you want to talk more, you know, to, to to ePlan users, then you can simply create a thread here. That'd be a good idea. Like, hey, what what are y'all doing this weekend? That kind of <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that answered the question. I want to. Uh, I'm going to take the presenter back from you. Yeah. It looks like uh, Hubert was asking a question too. 
I think that uh, Kruno might have answered that one, but uh, you can check on that. Yeah, no, it, it, he had two. One, one, Derek was, he says, does platform 2022 require constant internet access? No. You, but you have to, eventually you have to log in. You have 30 days. And I mean, you, if you, if you, if you really don't want to have constantly have to do that, you can uh, reach out to us and we can um, make some arrangements. So let's get to talking about you guys again. Todd, your first ever job was a busboy at the country club. And um, I, I accidentally left gear on the back of it. But whenever, whenever you're a busboy at the country club, does that mean that you got to play a lot of golf? Uh, unfortunately, uh, no. <laughs> it, it was it was a rough it was a rough uh, first job. They they didn't really treat me so well, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, hey, it was it was first first step into uh, the working world at a young age. With that kind of segues into not being treated well, then you decided that you liked the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> so <laughs> that's an extra level of torture right there. Uh, I am a huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. Why? Yes, big tell me, tell me why. Um, it's an interesting, funny story. Um, I'll make it quick. Uh, when I was young, a young kid, um, I have a couple uh, older brothers. We uh, we played video games and uh, we played Madden football. And um, I picked the green team and they had a fast quarterback, which at the time was Rounder Cunningham. And, um, you know, Reggie White. And so I just started to, I liked them on the game. And so I started watching it on TV. And then I just, every year after year, I, I got more involved, more invested into the team. And I just became this huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. It's funny because everybody thinks, oh, you're from Philadelphia. No, I'm not. Um, but uh, <laughs> I am, a, I, I keep up on the team and follow it off season. I'm a big, big uh, Eagles fan. Yeah, I think that was the same with me for Tech Mobile. <laughs> that I like the 49ers because on Tech Mobile they were really good, which is the yeah. early Nintendo game. Celebrity that you would like to meet, Michael Jordan. I worry about this because <laughs> do you think he would be as cool in person as you want him to be? You know, probably not. But um, you know, I, I like to have this idea. I just I, I've I'm a I'm a sports fan in general. I, I also played basketball, and I just loved his uh, his work ethic, his competitiveness, which I'm very competitive in all that I do, and um, and how he just raised the bar for everybody around him, and um, obviously fun to watch. And he's just been successful, you know, when he was on the court and when he's in the business world. And so, yeah, I think it, it would be, it would be pretty cool to uh, to meet him. I always wore his shoes. I had his number when I play play in sports, you know. So it'd be fun. Last thing was that what people don't know or might not know about you is that you were in Family Feud. Who was the host at the time? Um, uh, it's uh, um, oh my gosh, Steve Harvey. Who's the current one? Yeah, Steve Harvey. Sorry, gosh. So was it recently you were on Family <clears throat> Feud? I would say uh, maybe in the last five years. Wow. Yeah, yep. By uh, my family, my dad and my sister and my uncles went on. Um, another side note: my my dad and his four brothers, uh, I think in the seventies, were on Family Feud, and uh, they won big. Um, and so, you know, he fast forward many years later, and and he got to go on again with uh, with his daughter and his son and his, and a couple of his brothers. So, it was fun. Steve Harvey's a good guy. Did you guys win big? Uh, we did win one, yeah. My, uh, we won uh, at the end and won twenty thousand, and yeah, it was it was a fun experience. It was a little nerve wracking, you know. It's easy. I realize when you're at home and you watch it, you're like, how do they not answer that question correctly? It, there's a lot of pressure when you're there, and then the person right before you just took your your answer for you, and you have to think like that real quick when Steve comes to you. So I had a better appreciation for those people that go go on there. Was there it on YouTube? I'm I'm sure you can find it. I don't. I, I still get text messages to this day saying, "Hey, I saw you on TV," and that was like five years ago. So. Okay. So what was something that we might not know about the behind the scenes of being on Family Feud? Um, I guess one thing that I was surprised by is when they're not filming. Uh, you know, I would just assume Steve Harvey's a big, a big star, right? That he goes back to his dressing room and you know all this. Well, he stays out there. He talks to the crowd. He does 
uh, some stand-up comedy, shares a little bit about his upbringing, encouraging the people. It was just cool to see him behind the scenes. And I was like, wow, Steve Harvey's a cool guy. So, hmm. Derek, you got a lot to follow with this. <laughs> yeah. Your first job ever, it, it was with the Army. I, that's a step in a different direction from working at the country club. But uh, you were in the Army for a little while? I, I'm still in right now. Really? I'm, yeah, I'm serving part time in the Illinois Army National Guard. Wow. So well, technically, it's not my this. my first job. I work in uh, at in Dairy Dairy Queen before, but yeah, I mean, it's just my first adult job, I guess. <laughs> okay. Important question about working at Dairy Queen: Do you have to do the loop whenever you make the ice cream cones? Yeah, you have to do the loop, and you have to do the the, the trick. That they do okay if, so if you, you don't turn it up if you don't turn it upside down do you get fired no because <laughs> <laughs> whenever uh, probably about a month ago we we're at dairy queen and my kid said she didn't turn it upside down what's gonna happen to her i'm like i, mean, I don't know man I don't you'll, know. you'll feel bad because you know especially with kids they expect you to do it and then if you don't do it they'll, they'll look sad <laughs> favorite sports team the chicago bulls so I guess that Michael Jordan would be pretty uh, pretty high on your list too, right? Uh, not really. More like a Kobe Bryant fan. But okay. Kind of like the same people, same mentality. <laughs> and and why is The Rock that celebrity you want to meet? I don't know. He just seems like a really humble guy, you know. And he's done a lot. He doesn't stop. He's everywhere. I just want to know how he does it. It's kind of similar to Kevin Hart. That's probably why they click. He seems like he's the kind of person that is just trying to make the world a better place. Exactly. He's just living the life. You know? And then something that we didn't know about you is that your native language, and this is the, the language that you grew up speaking, was is it uh, Tagalog? Yes. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Tagalog. Tagalog, sorry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, we, <laughs> we speak. So growing up, we have to learn our native language and English at the same time. We're okay. heavily influenced by the U.S. So if you go to the Philippines, everything's in English. Yeah. Can you say, can you say, welcome to E-Plan? Oh, man, you put me on the spot again. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't know how to say it in Welcome to E-Plan. No, I can't do it. Oh, <laughs> if if you have anybody that from back home watching right now, they're they're not very happy I'll with. Be disappointed. Them. Yeah, very disappointed. <laughs> so, I for your sake, I hope that they don't catch this on you. No, here's the somewhere. thing. Like when we speak, it's it's like a mix of English and Tagalog. So, how okay. you how we say it would be just like welcome to E-Plan and everyone would just understand. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. Getting back to E-Plan, let me ask you this. What common ports need to be opened in the firewall and uh, what URLs need to be whitelisted in order for E-Plan functionalities to work? I think this is a really good question to answer. Yeah, so this is a really technical question. I have to share my screen in order okay. for everybody to see this uh, this picture that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and share again. This is it right here. A lot of times we get calls in support and they can't activate their license. And a lot of times the IT department, you know, they have security measures. So we have to let them know that they have to have these, these, these links uh, whitelisted in order for the activation to work and also ports in order for the, you know, e-pulse to work or e-view. So if I can, uh, I can take a screenshot of this and then maybe send it out to whoever needs it. Yeah, that'd be great. If you take a screenshot and send it to me, I'll include this. I'll also include the links that you put in the chat so yes. that everybody can see. Um, and, what I do is after we're done, I take the video and I email it to everyone that registered 
Uh, and I also send the important links that are part of the discussion that we had today. So this would be really great for me to to have along with that. So uh, anybody that thinks, oh, let me let me do a, a screenshot real quick. Don't worry, I'll send this along to you. Perfect. Yeah. So, Todd, let me ask you, after after training, is there a way to access the topics that were discussed in a class for, for review later? Because I know that there, there can be a lot of things that go on in a class and you think, oh, that's good information, but you're you're kind of worried that you are gonna or you're gonna miss something if you forget about that question. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is something that we I would say is still kind of fairly new. I think it was last year, sometime early in the year, we, we launched this and it's, it's great because, you know, our trainings are a week long and it's a lot of information and, um, you know, we're human. We can't remember every single thing that we took in the training. And so you take the training, you start to use the software and then you're like, oh, what, what was that one thing? I can't remember. And so now once you complete the training, we actually will provide you a, a username and a password and a login to access these videos that will go over those topics that were covered in the training. And, and uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, I think they have access uh, up to six months of these videos. So you can have that, you can be using on it, go back to those videos, watch it again. And so this has been something that's been very helpful for, for people going through trainings and, um, and something that, you know, if some reason, maybe after six months, you still need it, you know, give, give me a call. We can try to make something happen for you, but it's, it's a great thing. And I think it'll really help you get up to speed a lot quicker. Yeah. I mean, re re retaining the information is, it's, is key, right? In order for you to get started, you have to remember what we learn in the training. So that's why we provide those videos now on top of the documentation that we improve throughout the years of training. So. You have everything you need just uh, from the training perspective, but you can also go to our ePlan help website where we show you all the, the different topics uh, covered within the platform. So, And we have advanced trainings too, Derek. How do you, how do you find and sign up for those? I'm hoping that, that you're gonna say that we're doing a great job with marketing to, so that people know about these. Yes, you have to go to our website. Maybe I can share my screen. So while you do that, let me see let it. me let Todd know that you can you can find your family feud on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Thanks. you know what we're going to be doing this afternoon after we get off this call. <laughs> so if you go to ePlanUSA.com under services we have the training web page here you, you can look at the training schedule that we offer whether it be basic training and for the advanced training will also be listed here there you go so these are all the the advanced trainings that we offer from the professional services department. So if you're interested in learning more about, for example, PLCs, we do offer this. We just had one, you know, this week, actually. We have uh, also learning more about the, the, the configuration of, of the software, how, how to set it up properly, and, you know, tips and tricks, really. So depending on what you're interested in, you can sign up here. Yeah. Very good. Hey, let me ask both of you about this, about parts creation. creation. Uh, what are the options for parts creation? Um, I for for me, and I'll I'll definitely have Derek's input. Um, you know, I get a lot of a lot of those type of questions. Is we obviously have an amazing data portal. Um, we have you know over 400 manufacturers. I think it is over a million parts. Um, do we have every manufacturer? No. Do we have every part number of every ma the manufacturer we have in there? No, we don't. We have a lot though, right? And so when they 
go in there and they happen to not find the parts or a part that they don't uh, is not in that for what do they do? And and I'll, I'll share some of the things that I, I share with them, Derek, is obviously they can create their own part. Um, and a follow-up question is, hey, how, how hard is that? Which uh, I, I think you can answer. It's not really hard. Um, the other thing is we have uh, what we call a customer success package that we can provide with a proposal where we can actually help create parts at no, no cost. And then I think third is we can actually, as a service for purchase, we can actually create parts for them. Um, so those are kind of the three options that I talk about. Uh, Derek, what are your thoughts? Do you have any input or addition to that? I mean, you, you kind of mentioned everything, but yeah, I, we also teach you how to create your own parts, right? Using uh, the macro technology that we, that is uh, part of the, 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 the the ePlan platform. So really, I mean, it's just a matter of setting it up, but since we already have data portal, you can start off with that. You can download a similar part, or if it's existing and you just have to modify it, tweak it a little bit, you can use the same data and uh, save it as a macro. And then there you have it. You can use it as many times as you want. Yeah, yeah, so if you, if you, you just get a motor uh, of uh, Alan Bradley and then you just copy it, it changes it to what you want and, yeah. and you kind of already got it going. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to start from scratch, you know. I feel like that's a very underrated portion of what ePlan offers is that data portal because there's so much in there and over a million parts just sitting there and it makes it so much easier. But also if you're interested in, in getting your part as being part of that, then you can come and approach us and, and talk to us about maybe having um, your parts in our data portal too. Yeah, yeah, and, and they, they could also even go to their manufacturer, talk to them directly and have them connect with us as well, because I don't know if all of our users know or, or people that are interested is, is we have a dedicated team that, that works directly with the manufacturers. So that their, their job is to make sure we have good data coming in and out, updates, all of that. So it's, it's an important thing for us. And and uh, as you guys reach out to your manufacturer, to us, we, we will work together to try to make that uh, complete for you. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this Friday before Memorial Day. What are y'all doing for Memorial Day? Any important plans? I, I will be uh, taking part in some smoked meat of some sort uh, to, be, to be determined. Could be baby back ribs or it could be some brisket. Not sure yet. Okay. Okay. Derek, you going over okay. to his house? If I'm invited, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing yeah, this weekend? For me, well, right now it's 50 degrees in Chicago, which is crazy, right? But in the on starting Monday, it'll be like 80 or 92. So I think I'm just going to go to the park and enjoy the weather. <laughs> It's 50 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Chicago? Yes, like 56 or something. It's 88 here in Houston. Wow. So, yeah, it, it'll be, by next week, it'll be in the hundreds, I'm sure. Yay. I'm excited about that. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. I will send this recording out uh, in the next few days. Have yourself a great Memorial Day. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Derek. And thanks for joining us on Open Line Friday. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody.